I came on the board in 2010, and I believe you're referring to the, um, the plan that we came up with around 2012. And at that time, we were trying to find a strategic direction for the board, what our new values and mission was going to be. Um, and kind of laying out the future and the vision for where we wanted to see the board go in terms of its internal workings and in terms of um, improving its own um, image and its own processes and creating new operations um, that would make it um, operate absolutely perfectly. Well, I've told this story before, so hopefully people won't be bored of hearing it, but, um, but I've been a psychologist for uh, 27 years, uh, of which 24 years has been spent in Minnesota. And until I got on the board, my experience with the board was not entirely positive. Um, like many people, I had um, paid my renewal and hoped not to hear from the board actively avoided getting on the board's radar. Um, when I applied to get on the board and finally um, was appointed by Governor Pawlenty, um, I realized that um, I had been mistaken, that the board was made up of a lot of hardworking people, both internally um, as well as other psychologists and public members who um, really wanted to uh, create a vision that uh, became a resource for the people of Minnesota. So for me, um, I think probably the most salient thing that I, that I was aware of was if I maintained a less than stellar attitude about the board throughout much of my career, and maybe other psychologists did as well, and I really um, wanted to make it one of my initiatives to um, improve the, the, um, uh, the way the board is, is perceived by stakeholders, licensees, and, and applicants, and public members, public people. Well, the two initiatives that um, I really um, sort of uh, became my signature issues I could start with. Um, one of the things uh, that I wanted to do was to have the board reach out more to psychologists and training uh, through the degree granting programs in Minnesota. And part of that was driven by the idea that the kinds of problems we were seeing on the CRC committee, which I've served on continuously since I've been on the board, um, perhaps might have been uh, nipped in the bud earlier upstream um, if students in training had a better idea of what the rules and statutes are um, and also to see the board as a resource. So when I became chair in 2013, one of the first initiatives I had was to uh, direct uh, the board's resources towards making sure that every graduate institution um, in psychology in Minnesota is visited at least once every year by board staff and board members, not only to disseminate information, but also to put a face on the board and to make the board um, a less scary entity. And I think we've been very successful with that based on feedback that we've gotten. I know I've done that when I went out to Argosy one time. And it was very enjoyable and it felt very collegial. And, and so my hope is that that will continue and become a standard part of board outreach. Um, although it wasn't my idea, the, the CAFE conference has been, I think, hugely successful. I've attended them as a licensee and, and also as a presenter, um, and I've heard nothing but positive remarks from psychologists. Um, the other thing is that because uh, I represent a rural part of the state, um, one of my platforms was to increase um, access to taking the professional responsibility exam without having to drive down to Minneapolis. It, to me, felt as a greater Minnesota psychologist that it was a disproportionate um, burden on psychologists to literally have to take a day off of work, possibly stay in a hotel um, for a short test, um, and that it was disproportionately burdensome compared to our urban colleagues. And so one of the things we'll be rolling out here shortly is disseminated test taking so people will be able to take the test electronically closer to home and I can I can be quite certain for speaking for greater Minnesota psychologists that now will be perceived as very favorable um, and a real step forward as far as the board's relations to greater Minnesota psychologists. Well 
Well, it's hard to gauge that uh, quantifiably. I can certainly speak to the qualitative or anecdotal experiences that I've had primarily when I was chair in 2013 and 2014. Um, people would constantly contact me, um, letting me know how impressed they were with um, kind of the new face of the board, the new vision of the board, how user-friendly it was at the Minnesota Psychological Association annual meetings. Um, literally dozens of people would come up to me and comment about what a day and night experience it was for them with whatever their most recent encounter with the board was. And, um, and they felt very much recognized as colleagues and, and saw the board as being much less punitive. At least their perception was that it had been punitive and saw it more as a resource. One of the catchphrases that I had tried to promote when I was chair um, was to try to get people to stand with the board rather than to avoid the board or run from the board. And I think we're convincing people one, one heart and mind at a time. I would say um, maybe this is two things, but uh, we've had two Kaizen events. Um, one had to do with examining the licensing process, and one had to do with examining the complaint resolution process. And for people who've never been involved in a Kaizen process, it's very intense. It goes on for four or five days, um, and really is a micro-analysis of every step and every uh, part of an operational plan to look at where we can improve, save resources, become good stewards of time and money. And I think what came out of both of those kinds of things was that we substantially improved um, the turnaround of complaints uh, brought to the CRC, um, which is our primary mission is to protect the public. So we've cut down the amount of time that it's taken to process complaints uh, by adding in a number of interim steps um, and have become much more efficient in that. And I think that definitely serves the public and our mission. Um, and similarly, one of the complaints that I know Minnesota has had in the distant past in the board is that it took an extraordinarily long time to get through the licensure process. And particularly for greater Minnesota clinics or hospitals um, who may be suffering from workforce shortages, it's very important to be able to identify a candidate and get them through the licensure process very quickly. But in the past, and I mean the distant past, it would take sometimes six months, nine months, even when um, all the processes were in place. And that really directly impacted consumers. So I'm really proud of the fact that we now have a, just a crack team in terms of going through uh, the application process and getting people licensed as quickly as, as possible, um, and also addressing the safety of consumers by improving the, the complaint process. I think because we have quite a few new board members, um, I commented before that we have um, sort of almost two cohorts on the board. We've got people who've been on the board two, three, and four years, um, and we've got folks who've come on in the last year. So I think it'll be very important um, to really kind of bring everybody up to speed um, and to have in place a process by which people understand their role as a board member responsibility as a board member um, and how they can best contribute to the mission. We need to continue and perhaps never stop the outreach to stakeholders um, through the CAFE conference, through visiting graduate education, but even something as simple as when people call the board. Um, believe it or not, one of my clinical colleagues had an urgent issue this very week from our clinic in Detroit Lakes that required um, verification of licensure being sent from here to another state board in actually North Dakota. And that individual came to my office because literally we practiced together for 10 years. And he said, I need to have this done by Monday. Um, is this going to be a problem? And I, I told him confidently that I was certain that if he called the right person and I directed him to the right person, and indicated what the need was, that if at all possible, they would act on it as quickly as, as possible. And um, believe it or not, the next day he came back and told me 
how favorable his experience had been with the board, saying that uh, the North Dakota board was meeting on Monday, they needed a license verification sent, um, and that our staff members had responded instantly uh, and taken care of it all within one day. And uh, my partner was both surprised and pleasantly shocked, and, um, and I had a chance to say that's what we do with the board now, is that we function great amount of pride and a great amount of competence and that's what you can expect in the future. So I know that's just one person but it was a real life situation that I observed um, and I'm pretty confident it wouldn't have happened 10 years ago. I guess I would say uh, operate with integrity, um, be humble, be communicative. Uh, remember that it is an honor to serve on the board. Uh, we joke about the time and expense and so forth, but um, it really is an honor to serve on the board and to take pride in that. Um, but to always operate.